time with the memory princess. Now, I have a musical memory princess friend here. Do you want to tell us your name? My name is Sophia. Yeah, this is my friend Sophia. And the cool thing about Sophia, do you want to tell us where you're from, Sophia? I am from Indonesia. She's from Indonesia. So the thing is, this week, you might notice that we're not in real memory land. We're not in memory land where we have the huge waterfall and the memory princess reading tree, but we are kind of like in a memory land because memory, what makes memory land memory land is if you're reciting the Bible. And Sophia and I, yesterday we were in the car and we were like reciting the Bible all day, so we're actually in a place called Arkansas. But since we're reciting the Bible in Arkansas, this place in Arkansas is also memory land. So we will do some reading time with the memory princess. And we are going to start with a book called Old New. All right, Sophia, you're on. You want to help flip the pages? So it says, Old New, 1 John 2, 7 through 11. Can you see what that picture looks like on the front? Yeah, so there's a cross, but this part of it looks kind of like gray and fuzzy and kind of confusing and hard, but the other part looks very new. All right, let's open it and see what it looks like. All right, one more page. All right, so this one goes, Beloved, I am writing you no new a commandment, commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. Can you tell what's happening in this picture? So see, there's this dude. Can you tell what he's holding? He's holding a plan, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell the difference between this old plan back here and this plan here? Yeah. Yes. Does that one look kind of the same? But it's kind of different, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this one, it's all kind of grayed out, it's all kind of fuzzy, but here, boom, the plan makes sense. And do you know what that plan is talking about? It was talking about Jesus and how, and the plan for salvation of how Jesus would be the one that instead of us getting punished for our sin, Jesus was the one that would get punished for our sin. And it used to be kind of confusing how that would all work. But then now that Jesus came, John was like, guys, this is the plan. This is what we've been waiting for the entire time. We've been waiting for this Messiah to come. So it's kind of because it actually has it. All right. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. Can you guess what the old commandment is? Old commandment. Do you know there's two testaments in the Bible? One's yeah. called the, the Old Testament, and the other one's called the New, the New Testament. And so some people are like, oh, I only believe in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the only thing that's true. But this whole new Jesus idea, uh, no, that doesn't make any sense. That's not, that's, that's not really what it's talking about. So here, John is like, guys, it's the same one. It's the same old commandment that you've heard, but, you wanna flip it up and see? At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you. So Jesus was talked about, do you know that Jesus was talked about all throughout the Old Testament? Yeah, so it was talking about, guys, there's going to be this person who's going to save you. There's going to be this person who's going to save you. There's going to be this person who's going to save you. And so they're like, oh, yes, we understand that there's going to be this person that's going to save us. But then Jesus came and actually saved people. And some people were like, oh, no, 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 that's a new commandment. That's a new commandment. But it is, a, is it actually a new commandment? No. No, it's really the same commandment. At the same time, it is kind of like a new commandment, but it's kind of an old commandment. So John is clarified, guys. It's the same commandment. Yeah, it's kind of new but it really is the same old commandment that you have to All right. Which is true ooh, ooh, in him and in you. No. Can you see something that's the same in here as in Joshua's heart? What's something that's the same? See God up here? Yeah. yeah, so this is God, but when you become a, a Christian, when you believe in Christ, there, God, the Holy Spirit, comes inside of your heart. And so he's saying, guys, this plan for how you can be saved is true in him. Salvation came from God. But it's also true inside of your guys' heart. It's also true in you. All right, you want to see? Because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Can you tell what's happening in this picture? So how is the darkness passing away over here? Yeah, God came. And do you know what God someday is going to do to the sinful world? going to get rid of the sinful world? Yeah. yeah, so see this picture? Someday God will get rid of this sinful world. But can you also tell what's happening in Joshua's heart? Is he getting rid of the sin in his heart too? Yeah, yeah. so
So when we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, the sin is going away in our hearts because God is getting us closer and closer and closer to God. And in the same way, God, as time goes on, and now that Jesus has come, we're getting closer and closer to when God will destroy all sin. So that's pretty cool. All right. Whoever says he is in the light. All right, so what is Joe Schmo saying? He's saying, is he saying that he's he loves God? Yes. Yeah, he's like, I love God. I'm a good person. I'm super great. But what are his actions? Are his actually go actions godly or sinful? No, sinful? Yeah, he has all these sinful actions. So what does that tell you about his heart? If someone says, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I love God, but then their actions are really sinful, what does that probably tell you about their heart? Can you yeah. Their hearts are still in darkness. Yeah, their hearts are probably still in darkness because what's in your heart will come out in your actions. Your actions will match your heart. And since his actions were sinful, that probably means that his heart is still sinful and he has still needs to be saved by God. So ever, even if you say in the light, but your actions are sinful, that probably means that you're still in the darkness. All right, but what about this picture? Can you tell what Joe Schmo's doing? What are Joe Schmo's actions? He, yeah, so is he being godly or is he being sinful? Godly. He's being godly, so what does that probably tell you about his heart? Does he have a godly heart, maybe? Yes. All right, you want to open the flap and say, so whoever loves his brother <gasps> abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. So he's being godly, and you can tell that he has a godly heart because of his godly actions. All right. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness. All right, you want to flip it? So he says, oh, yeah, I love God, but is he in the light or is he in the darkness? In the darkness. He's in the darkness. Can he, when you're in the darkness, can you see very well? No. No. And so if your heart is in the dark, can you see your sin very well? No. No. You're like, oh yeah, no, I'm a good person. I don't see my sin. Punch, punch, punch. Oh yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a great person. Punch, punch, punch. I can't see my sin very well. Because when your heart's, when you're not saved, your heart's in the darkness and you cannot see all the sinful things that you're doing. And you think you're a good person. And you guys are going to see that a lot. A lot of people say, oh yeah. I'm a great person, yeah, I make some mistakes, but I'm basically a good person. And this verse is saying, if they say that, they don't understand how sinful their sin is. Because if we are in the darkness, we don't see that we're sinful. So, does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So he is blind, it's kind of like he's blind to his sin because he can't see how sinful his sin is. Whereas if you're saved, when God's word will shine on your heart and go like, yo, look, there's a sin in your heart. And then you'll confess that sin and you will have godly actions. So that is what this verse is talking about. So keep your eyes open and see if you can find a time in your real life where this verse happens. Maybe there was a person that said, oh yeah, I'm a good person. I don't do too many bad things. That might show that their eyes are darkened and that the darkness has blinded their eyes. All right. Shall we, shall we have a memory? We're, we're practicing our memory princess waves. Do we do a memory princess wave? Where you have your elegant light strength. All right, happy memorizing. There we go. That was pretty fun.